dream what we might become. Hey guys, don't mind me, I'm just putting. It's my 200th episode, yeah, let's give it a woot, 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 yeah. Oh, guys, hey guys, it's been 200 episodes of me, Metaverse Explorer, in Star Atlas. And as always, my job is to bring you what I think you need to know in Star Atlas. I don't always get it right, but my job is to keep you updated, right? Sometimes I get things really right, sometimes I get it wrong. That's the part of business, right? That's normal. Guys, welcome to my 200th episode. I did have some ships to give away, but for now I just wanted to get the, sh get the video out and just get to see what you guys are doing in Sage, you know, because are you playing it? Because I am playing it. Are you playing it? I hope you're playing it. That's, this is what we've been waiting for, right? For a long time in Star Wars. Now, before we go, let's just keep dancing a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop this around now. All right, all right, all right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Are you playing Sage? That's what I want to know, because I am playing it. I myself am going through one specific bug. We'll talk about the entire thing. Um, um, so first off, this is like a giant monumental milestone for Star Atlas, right? We've been waiting for this a very long time, right? Two years, two plus years, right? Um, it is, yes, it's still in its infancy. Remember, what you're seeing now is only just like the base UI, right? Um, what we're actually going to be getting later on is the WebGL version, okay? That's not coming now. It will come later. So this is just like a text-based starter just to get you going, to send those transactions, get a feel for it. And then when WebGL comes in with combat, it's going to be much, much nicer. So yeah, that's Sage Labs. I hope you've tried it. I hope you've logged in. And I hope it's been going okay for you so far. We can talk strategy about it another time. But for now, let's keep going with what else I think you need to know. The first thing, let's have a look at what Sage uh, uh, Labs has done to the ship pricing market. We have Rainbow Ohms being the top selling ship so far. 44 of them have exchanged hands at $25,000, right? That's this week, right? That is a lot. Rainbow Ohms were nowhere near the top previously. And then in close second, you have the Fimble Air Bikes. Look at the count, 5,771. Holy crap, that is a lot of Fimble Air Bikes. Now, why? Let's take a look at the first top two, right? Rainbow Ohm is a freighting ship, okay? It can car carry a whole bunch of stuff for people. And we kept saying, your first point of call when you're making your fleet is look at your cargo. How much can you actually transfer from point A to point B? Because there's no point taking all of your stuff to point A, craft, uh, um, uh, mining everything at point A. What are you going to do with it at point A? You're going to have to take it somewhere, right? And your ships that are, can craft it, uh, the ships that go mining for it, they're not the best to take it away. So it's really your cargo that limits you. Second thing is the Fimble Air Bike. It's a common racer, extra, extra small common racer, right? And... $25,000 worth of it. What are they going to be used for? Everyone's buying them to actually craft because it gives you one crew member. It is the lowest cost crew member that you can have in any of the ships, right? As well as you can use it for the SDU scanning because you get uh, for 10 toolkits and 10 air bikes, you can get 10 SDUs uh, fairly easily, right? Every two minutes if you want to. Um, so yeah, that's what people are using for both for crafting as well as for SDU scanning. Now, the second one is also the large epic um, PSR-8, which is also happens to be a refuel repair. It has a huge cargo space. And then followed by the uh, uh, C9. And then, of course, we have one tank ship, which someone has bought for 16K. That is pretty impressive, ladies and gentlemen. Someone bought a tank ship. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So that's a, a snapshot of like the latest uh, uh, selling prices in Star Atlas for the ships. They all have a reason why they are there, right? People value the Fimble Air Bike and the Rainbow Ohm freighting. People need to freight some stuff back and forth. Now, before we kept going, let's give a huge shout out to the photography winner of the year of the year. <laughs> oh, actually, maybe we should have a year. All the ones in all of the months, we should all add up to one year. Give it out at the Journey Awards. There's an idea for you. Now, this is the last uh, photography contest uh, winner. I think it was Environment, if I'm not wrong. Um, this was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to this guy. Um, you should be getting this minted as an NFT online. So, yeah, congrats, man. Well done. That's a good shot. Now, I want to shout out to one specific tool that I have found that I think you should need, uh, you should know of. It's just a way to, it's just a rudimentary tool for now. There will be others coming out, right? Um, but for now, let's just shout out this uh, Colibre Espancial. 
Um, I think it's a Brazilian or Mexican. I forget. I'm sorry. Um, it's a it's a it's a guy out there I know of. Um, I don't know him specifically, but he created a small website for us to actually track all of the prices for all of the resources because it's hard to see on the Cyrilus website, right? You need it all aggregated. So let's have a look at it here. Oh, 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 also, that was shouted out by Siggy. Siggy, man, I always love you because you always get some good info in Star Atlas and you really help everyone else in the community. So thank you very much, Siggy. Now, let's go to this website. It is Colibre Espacial dot Espanol. I think it's maybe Spanish. Maybe I'm right, Spanish. Now, if you do like this, make sure you give a donation to Colibre dot Soul. Basically, what is it? It tells you what the current prices are for all of the um, for all of the new resources out there. You can have a look at fuel. Fuel is 0 0.000008 cents. We already knew that, right? Oh, dollars, sorry, right? We already know that, fuel is normal. But what about retinol, copper, iron ore, hydrogen, luminite, arco, uh, carbon? So you can even input this data into a crafting kind of um, um, machine where you'll say, okay, this costs this much, this costs this much, and then the third item actually sells for this much and be like, automatically, that's an arbitrage I can make. And you don't need experience to craft anything, you just need the items, right? And you just need the people and you just need the time to craft it. So yeah, that is a possibility. You could use this as an arbitrage tool. That's it, right? So I'm gonna leave that there. This is a very good resource. Please check it out, right? Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there, but uh, what I'm really, oh, actually the survey data units. The survey data units, I wanna chat to you very quickly about it. Um, they are, I think, overpriced, right? I think they are. Um, um, sure, volumes are low, but still, it, it doesn't take long for 10 air bikes to find 10 of them in every two minute span, okay? And they are not worth, they, they, they are worth a lot because people, everyone needs them, right? And they are a hurdle, it's a time hurdle to get them. And there's also like a, a market cap that's d released into Sage Labs. So there's a cap there and it's worth it because people need it to redeem ships or redeem SDUs, redeem all the stuff they want. But at the same time, it's also pretty hard to come by. And it also gives people, the lower ship people, uh, uh, something to work to because they can't go and craft the huge things, right? So yes, they are worth a bit, but they're not worth this much. They're not worth what I, last I saw, like 18 or 17 Atlas each, okay? And you get one, you get, you get 10 per scan every two minutes times everyone else's air bikes. Too much, it's not worth that much. So I would say, please be very, very cautious with the SDU price at the moment. All right, now, that being said, let's go to golden tickets. Golden tickets are currently being priced at around 50 cents each, 49, uh, 6991. That's 50 cents for a golden ticket. That's not bad, okay? Now, that's, we know the golden tickets are like the gambling approach, you know, you don't wanna go and craft something specific. The team needed to be a sink for the resources so you can craft this and go in the running to win something, maybe, right? It's all that gambling aspect. I don't really do that, so no problem. I'm not going after golden tickets myself. I'm not a ticket person, I'm not a gambling person, which is fine, you know? Some people in the stage are, that's fine. Now, what I'm interested in is, how many are there? Because it's a raffle system, okay? And people, there's a lot of smart people in Star Atlas. They can figure out the math if something is worth it or not, right? So you have a raffle and we know how much is in that raffle. And if you have a ticket that gives you a percentage chance to get into that raffle and to win something, then it's math. You can figure out if like at a certain price point, this is worth it or not, okay? Let's have a quick look. I looked on the Blockchain Explorer. You can easily search for the golden ticket from Star Atlas and see how many there are, okay? Let's just do some very quick sleuthing and have a look. Created, well, this was the mint address there. That's fine. Um, let's go and see the um, transfers. People keep transferring it back and forth. 10 of them, I'm gonna remove myself so you can actually see. There we go. You see, 10 of them, 60 of them, 10 of them. People keep crafting it, we keep buying it, selling it, no issues. What I actually want to look at is I want to look at the holders, okay? There are, so far, 107,000 golden tickets. That is a lot, my friends. That is a lot of golden tickets. Now, that doesn't mean that they're all being redeemed for the first prize. Let's have a look at the distribution a little bit. We have $88,000, or 88,000, sorry, nearly 80%, 82% in one specific account. Now, this account, let me just bring my face back so you can see. This account is likely the team who are collecting it, or that smart contract that is collecting it from everyone else who's submitting it to then go and redeem, okay? 
So that's one thing I think it is. I don't think any one person has 82% of the of the gold tickets. Otherwise, they'd be very broken, right? I do think this second person is true though. This 5k amount, someone has 5%, 5,000 golden tickets, right? Let's have a look at the um, um, analysis of it. So this is what it looks like right now, right? Some, I think that's the uh, startless, uh, um, um, what do you say, uh, smart program. And then this is the second person and then followed by everyone else who's got a little bit all adding up. What's very interesting though, so for you to actually have a golden ticket, you have to create a Solana account or a rent free account. And so it's actually very interesting, just above my head here, you can see how many people actually hold this golden ticket, 417 people. So that is a good kind of idea to give you that there's 417, 400, 500, you know, because a person would have more than one account for, for a, um, like more than one wallet for a golden ticket. So it's very likely that we are actually around the 400 mark for people who actually have golden tickets in their wallets. That's not a lot of people, right? 400 people, still. Is impressive, right? Still, um, yeah. So, so, so the the golden tickets itself, they're not a bad play if that's what you like. If you want to go for that gamble and you want to try and win something from the sheet, which is it pretty impressive because now let's actually look at what you can win. I think I had it here. There we go. Now I'm not sure who actually shared this um, in the Afia Discord. Uh, thank you very much for whoever shared this. I think it was maybe his mustache ride, but this is floating around, and I don't even know if it's public or not. Don't get me in trouble, guys. So this is the first raffle, okay? The first raffle with, I'd say, 170,000 tickets so far. I hope they actually get burnt so that the it's much easier to calculate. So, Thimble Airbikes, there's gonna be 25 in there. Unibombers, 50. Lobus, 10. Base, uh, Osta Base Tiers, 10, 10, 10 each. On Agrica Mick, there's five of them. Five Armstrong Imps. Atlas Bundle, which is one million. So there's five million Atlas to go out. The CSS Tier 1s, there's three of them each. The Calico ATS Enforcer, there's one. That is a good steal, my friends. That is a really good steal. Fimble Mamba, there's two of them. Now, two Atlas Bundle for $5.6 million each. There's one of them. And Ogreka Sampa, a nice freighting ship. There's one of them. Look at here, I'm gonna take my face away so you can see. A Visas Ballad, holy shit. I want that Visas Ballad, one of them. Or hey, a Fimble Bios tank ship. There's two, two Fimble Bios tank ships in this first raffle and one of them just got sold for $16,000. So if you're lucky, if you can do the math, right, your 16K is your one ticket to even get that. You have a 0, 0.000 chance of that. What ticket, what price is that ticket worth? Okay, I'm not smart enough to do that math. There's probably calculations out there. You can probably look it up. But yeah, that's it, man. There's like, there's, there's stuff to be won here. And that's 300K, remember? And there's supposed to be 1.2 or $1.5 million worth of VWAP of ships for you to be won. So yeah, that's that's the game. Are you playing the game? Are you getting your resources? Are you crafting your golden tickets? Are you buying them? That's the game, congrats, we're playing, that's it. Now, that's pretty good, let's move on. Let's move on to the next thing. Yes, bugs exist in the game. You're playing the game, you've probably experienced bugs. The team um, took a while to come out with this list, but it is out now, so thank, you, thank God, Santi. Um, uh, first off, remember, it is the first iteration, the first version. It's only text-based for now, okay? Um, there's even people working on a different UI. I've seen someone with a different UI to the map that we see now. Um, so it might be even better for you to do it like that. The, the main idea is that transactions just th still keep going, right? Doesn't The transactions don't care that you have a different UI or user interface. No, it doesn't really fucking matter, sorry to swear. It's just about if you have enough fees to pay for your transaction and is that transaction true? Can it actually compute? That's what matters, right? At the end of the day, because this is a blockchain game. Because remember, Star Atlas could, go, um, if Automata could go away and someone else can come in and use a different UI. That's the whole idea of having a blockchain on the game. Uh, a game on the blockchain, you know what I mean. Now, some bugs. Let's talk about the bugs a little bit. People are experiencing bugs. Uh, we're hard working on them. Here's a list of some that have a workaround, some that don't have a workaround. Bugs without current workarounds. They are working on it. The unable to exit the subwarp bug. That is a huge one. This is affecting me. I'm not upset at it. I knew this was a, just a first kind of, it's gonna be buggy when it first comes out. Other people I've seen put in the capital ships and it's gotten stuck. I'm like, dude, come on. You've got to wait a bit. Test out the waters. Make sure everything works right. Unable to respawn bug. Unable to self-destruct bug. So even if they're stuck somewhere, they can't click the self-destruct to actually get them out of it. No. Unable to harvest resources and stop mining. 
Let me just log into mine very quickly and show you. So this is my general account, right? Let me come back so you don't get any more of my uh, little white things. Uh, this is my general account, right? So let me talk to you about what's actually happened. I've set my account up to auto transact on Soulflare um, because uh, uh, Phantom Wallet only has a two hour window for auto transact. So I don't want that. I want like a little bit more. I don't want to, you know, I'm sitting at the computer, then I have to all of a sudden transact. Nah, I'm, I'm good. So this fleet, it's even at the, um, it's at the um, Oster Space Station, right? So Oster CSS, I have one there arrived. I've, I've um, sub warped it from one spot to this spot. Now I need to actually exit that sub warp, which is one transaction. You go to click the exit sub warp, let me go here. You go to click the exit sub warp and the transaction will come up as a failure, okay? Um, this is terrible because one, there is no way, let me show my face again so you can see how serious I am. There is no way for you to access anything on this fleet, okay? Usually you have manage fleet button, which is right behind me here. Usually you have a manage fleet and then you get access to the self-destruct button, okay? Or usually you can access the fleet and then you can warp it to somewhere else, right? But look at this, you go here, you go to that fleet itself. Let me take myself away. You go to that fleet itself. There's no manage fleet. There's no exit uh, uh, sub warp button here. You then have to click, go to the asset location. Sure, right? It's loading. Give it some time to load. Yep. Yep, and now it's ready to exit subwarp, but you can't dock. You, even if you click exit subwarp, you can't get out of it. So I can't even look at my inventory. I can't look at the items I have, if it's good or bad. I can't look at, I can't do anything. I can't move it. I can't troubleshoot it at all, only because of one bottleneck. Now this is, that's fine, right? I'm not upset. This is part of the game, right? This is this, its first iteration. Don't be upset, guys. Um, yes, your, your, your capital ships may not be earning now for you because they are stuck. Don't worry, they're working on them. There are some things you can do to try and uh, um, get the system working a little bit for you. So one big, um, uh, one big thing was people saying, enable the Atlas Prime, the Atlas Payer uh, fee account thing so that it uses Atlas to pay for your transaction for you. And that may send it as a different transaction, right? Um, and then that gets you out of that stuck phase. That's not working for me. I've tried everything. I cleared my cache, you know, I installed it. I, I, I even accessed this same wallet with a different wallet, like the seed phrase with a different wallet. Doesn't work, right? It's just the transaction wouldn't go through. Um, some people say uh, for other, uh, other bugs, you move one spot to another location and then you come back to the same spot you were and then you should be able to transfer resources. There's, there's, there's bugs, babe. There's bugs, guys. Um, let's look at some other ones. Um, bugs with workarounds. Give these a try. Resupplying, or if you're having trouble resupplying your base, add a different resource during transfer. Enable the Atlas Prime, which is what I just said. Disable and recreating the fleet. Yeah, I've done that too, uh, but not for this one, you can't, right? Undocking and docking again, closing rent account to step finance. Oh, maybe I should try closing the rent account to step finance. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. Maybe I should. Take that, take that, guys. That's one thing you can do. Yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah, because your step finance, um, oh, I'm worried then. What if, what if? So this is the problem with closing rent accounts. When you close, <clears throat> when you close a rent account, right? And you need to do send another transaction that requires a rent account to be open, but that transaction doesn't open a new one for you automatically. You have to then go and manually open a rent account for one specific item. I know it's a bit complicated. What I, one example I did for once was that I had a ship in score, right? But I was like, oh, I don't, I want my Solana back from the rent account because I'm going to leave it there for a long time. So I actually closed the rent account for SCORE, right? And then when I tried to withdraw that ship from SCORE, I couldn't because the rent account had been closed, right? And the withdrawal function from SCORE didn't create a new rent account for me. And this is a damn capital ship, right? So, oh no, sorry, not a capital ship. It was a large ship. So how the hell am I going to send a rent, uh, create a new rent account for a large ship that I can't afford another one of? And I don't know enough blockchain stuff to actually just open a random account. It's a bit difficult, right? Yeah, okay. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna speed it up because it's already getting to that 20 minute mark. So yeah, I'm experiencing bugs. You guys are experiencing bugs. It's okay, take it with a grain of salt. It's gonna come later. Now, I did wanna go on a little bit more about the marketplace insights just to see um, what, what is actually happening. We can see here that the Fimble air bike has the most volume. The uh, Ohm has like nearly as much volume. It's crazy. People are realizing that cargo is your number one, okay? People are realizing that cargo is number one. 
Now I was actually going to look here to see if we had anything new to show you guys because at Aphia we do like to take good care of you guys. But I think for now, please, please at least read the guide. The Missing Manual Part 1 by Fancracker. He only posted this like four days ago. It's still fresh. There's a lot of changing parts in Star Atlas so far. And it's actually pretty long, guys. Look at this. This is a huge manual that we've created. The team doesn't have to spend resources on this, right? This is great, great information. Look at this. And it still keeps going. So just load this page up, bookmark it, and then go and find, search and find whatever you need to know. Okay, because it's going to tell you. And lastly, I want to end it with this. Congratulations. It's a tweet by Aphia, and uh, they're announcing they made the first Fimble air bike. So this was two days ago. <laughs> but listen, was that, a, was, that a, was that a guild-wide effort? Yes, it was. And uh, yeah. I think that was the only way it was going to happen uh, <laughs> right. until they, they rectify if they intend to, um, this SDU mining in the corner and here, that you get. And here's my question to them. Okay. Did you guys fully gather all of the resources for this or did you guys at one point say screw it man let's go buy some of the rest of the stuff off the secondary market for example like right now you speed it up the, data, the sdus are two and a half cents that's that's the floor on sdus uh in the marketplace so i'm curious if they just you know if they literally went out and said you know what we're just all going to get together and we're going to go and farm all of the resources. We're going to go mining. Well, uh, Rome, uh, Whittakus, uh, uh, Ray, and as well as Fancy Hat, let me let you know. Yes, we did this. Aphia actually did uh, kind of craft, our f not kind of, we did craft the first air bike as well as the first ship because we are crafters. We are builders. Now, yes. Um, how did we actually do it? Uh, we actually had a working spreadsheet. Okay, we actually knew how much a Fimble air bike would cost, how much, how many resources, and we needed, you know, and we said, okay, we only need these resources. Don't send anything. We don't want to craft it ourselves because it's a, it's a type of account. I don't want to mention what it is for security reasons. Um, and, and we're like, yes, yeah, send us all the resources. We just need to redeem right away. And yes, people sent in a whole bunch of stuff. I managed. I tried to really send something, but I didn't make it in time. But I'm so happy that we're still the first people to actually do this, right? Now, yes, we did it. We crafted the first bike. No, this is beauty thing, right? Sorry, two things. First off, did we do it all ourselves? I think there was one guy who probably had toolkits just lying around that he sent it in anyway. Um, but I'm fairly sure, I have the Discord channel here, I'm fairly sure that it was all organic. I don't think we bought anything else off the marketplace. I think we just scanned for everything else. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, we have the first Vimple air bike. And no one, because this is on the blockchain, no one can ever take that away from us. Isn't that gorgeous? The blockchain is wide open, beautiful. You can see who crafted the first one and no one can ever take that away from us. This is like this is like a, a ceremonial item or, or like a ceremonial uh, um, um, a thing that you uh, put on a monument and like you put it on display. You want to join, you want to come to Aphia and visit our guild halls. This is the first craftable ship in Sage Lives in Star Atlas. Guys, yes, yes. And with that being said, I'm going to leave you there. That's why I think you need to be using the AFIA referral link only. You shouldn't be using any other referral link. You shouldn't be, you know, um, uh, even using any other guild. You need to join AFIA because we crafted the first Fimble Air Bike. Because we can say that because we did. Ah! <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to finish it off with a bit of a uh, dancing train. Dream what we might Two hundred episodes. All right, my friends, I'm gonna leave you and love you. Ciao for now. Bye.